Other thing that's a first for us tonight, and I think is working really well, is this SCTX. Um, the unlock gives us a little more accuracy, some turn compensation. So a little backstory for you before we get rolling into the VR stuff, because I don't know if I'm going to be the one running the tractor or not. I would guess probably not. But Dad and Jim, this would be, I can't remember what year they got the previous, like the, we had the 600 cart with the 6012, like our previous one. Um, when, before they bought that one, they, they were at the point where they did VR on every acre. Now I'm pretty sure it was only VR fertilizer. I would have to double check on that. And... On top of that, they they didn't have a great system for it to track. Um, the monitor would just tell you what it's applying at. And so he said, like, yeah, when we had the old, well, it was a New Holland cart on a 56, 56 or 54. I think it was 54, actually. 5412 tool, Seedhawk toolbar. Um, they had the VR on that and they, you know, it had a switch block and it had a display. Um, I can't remember. I think we ha still have that old display somewhere. Can't remember exactly what it is, but he said the tough part about it was that you didn't know when you were going to run out. It wasn't predictable. They... You could do one tank, fill it exactly the same. One tank might be, say it comes out to be 60 acres. And then the next one might come out be, just because of where you're doing on the field might come out to be 52 acres or 70. So he said, inevitably, you would get to the point where you do about 50 acres, what you think is about 80%, and you would go out and check. Now, we didn't have cameras didn't have scales and we didn't have blockage so you didn't really know when you were gonna run out and he said in it always seemed that you were running out at the far end of the field our previous drill they bought and they were told that it was VR capable now they were thinking it was actually VR sorry it was VR they were told it was VR compatible and they thought that meant VR capable. I, and I'm I'm probably putting words in their mouth, but they understood that it was real close to being VR because it had the electric over hydraulic meters and all that. It didn't have sectional control. Not that that was critical. Would have been great to have. But they found out after the fact that, no, we needed more nodes and a different display and something else had we not gotten this drill this year i'm pretty sure that i would have converted it to a vr capable i talked to a couple guys at vaderstad and they said yeah you can get a viper display now and it does it doesn't have scales obviously it's still not going to have scales if it didn't before but it does a better job of calculating especially if you've calibrated what a tank will hold, how many meter revolutions or whatever, it will figure that out and you'll have, it does a, a better job of tracking applied acres and acres to empty. Now, acres to empty is going to depend on where you are, but it will tell you roughly how many pounds are in that compartment. And it sounded like we needed some new nodes and a wiring harness and a GPS, I'm pretty sure. But they were saying about the same price. And this is several years later for a much more powerful display, more accurate, better interface and all that. So the price of that has come down severely. And that would have been way better than that crappy old loop controller too. So as far as swap maps, what I'm, I'm, what's really intriguing with them, 
is there's a, a high initial cost to getting in. The first year is a lot of startup costs. So they have to get out and map the field. They do their, uh, so they get the elevations and they develop maps and SWAT stands for soil, water, and topography. So they, they determine, okay, this area is a water shedding area. This is a water collecting area. Um, and then they, after that, they go and they take their truck out with, with their SWAT box and they scan the field and it determines a relative EC, electrical conductivity, which is kind of your salinity and the available, the ability of the soil to deliver your nutrients. And then they come out and they do soil testing and they do GPS soil testing. They don't do a whole, they don't do a field average. They do really good soil testing. And then they work with you to develop your prescriptions. It's kind of been a bit of a gong show this year because they were trying to get out in February. And that was when we had that warm snap. And the field just went muddy. And then we got snow after that. And then it got cold and it got hard. And then this spring it got flooded out. However, they still managed to hammer it out in like 10 days by the time they got out there. Because they wanted to be able to drive on it to map it and do the swap box thing before we got out and harrowed it. And then they came out and did soil sampling as well. So, and then they had to, you know, develop their, their, uh, field map and profile and all that and develop my VR prescription. And they hammered that out real fast. So thanks Sean for working hard on that. And so, that's been great. So all of that is the initial cost and I'm sure you could find it on their website, but it's, it's significant. It's, I'll, I'll throw a rough number out. It's about 13 bucks an acre. However, year over year, it actually becomes quite cheap, especially once you know get the, most of the farm to it. And I would suspect that'll be the case is that afterwards, you know, it, cost you only about a third they roll in some agronomy in that i want to say there's like a buck 50 an acre a year on their agronomy charge because you know they kind of make some recommendations they come out they take a look to make sure the staging's right and on top of that their yearly is they do soil testing well it's a screaming deal for soil testing to have gps done and that's the important thing is to have gps soil testing because you could have a field average, but if you're not doing the exact same spots, even a field average isn't that helpful. And that's kind of what we have been doing, kind of just mailing it in. So I want to make sure we get good data. And so they're going to, they do soil samples in a predetermined zone because they do essentially five zones, but they call it 10. And it's like one to two are very similar. They're just, it's kind of like a 1A, 1B. They test those and they, they develop their profile, but they go back to the same spot every year to GPS so that you get a much better trend. So I'm really excited for this trial. See, see it around that little yard there? I did square off my corners a little bit and get that going. So as far as my VR variable rate, I do have a map somewhere so that's what they've given me some rates I'm, I'm sure it'll be shaky as hell just because it's dark out and I can't have the uh, the stability going but essentially my top zones should be from three to six and they're saying we're targeting 75 bushel an acre which is good on the top end almost everything else is in the 60s except for zone 10 which is my most saline and yeah we still end up with an average fertilizer applied of 321 pounds the maximum rate we go to is 340 the minimum is 180 
and on our seed the maximum we go to is 150 in the saline area and 115 kind of in the middle ground 115 120 is our target rate minimum kind of thing but they're saying no based on your seed size and all that and uh, yeah our max is 150 our min is 115 and we yeah so we are as high as two and a half bushels an acre in the drowned out spots with only 180 pounds of fertilizer in that so that they're saying hopefully more plants will survive and tolerate the be able to grow some of the salt out without putting more salt in or too much salt they're saying that's the maximum you should be shooting for the other thing that's a first for us tonight and i think is working really well is this sctx um the unlock gives us a little more accuracy some turn compensation I'll try and remember to maybe do some filming as I'm turning but when I'm doing the headland you'll hopefully you'll see that the these boxes go well black with this current color scheme get back here and you'll see them adjust side to side and a bit of an angle to say that that's where I'm looking and, and they come up further ahead they say that's where I'm looking so if you're telling me to go right now I ain't getting there which is really handy so you can tell if you're gonna we had a couple spots where we had to go over four or five times and I'm convinced it was because we were flicking it to manual too late okay I'm coming up on the headlands I'm gonna try and hold this here, but I also have to look where I'm going. So hopefully you'll see it switch to black and then you'll kind of see it turn as I make this corner. And that's the look ahead. got to the point where I hope you saw everything I did there I'm sorry I wasn't really fully paying attention to the filming I was looking at this and that and everything else we haven't got to the point where we feel like we need to necessarily do the the one headland and then uh, go in and fill it in at the end we're going to try and do that on canola, but really, wheat seems vigorous enough. I don't think we're really concerned about it. We started with two headlands. We've kind of gotten to the point where most of the time we're doing three, and then that gives us lots of extra time to get online, and online is not necessarily the issue, but to make sure that it's got a chance to get the shanks all the way up and back down in time. I know Dad said he adjusted it and it's definitely snappier. I would still like it probably another 50% snappier. But as far as VR goes, it seems to be very good. Taking this, I, I, it's not like I doubted it would be bad. Um, I can't tell you what she's going to run out first, 
because I don't know exactly what zone I'm in right now. The rates are always fluctuating, so the remaining acres are always fluctuating. But right now, I'm, I think it was as low as about 35 on one. Yeah. So I'm thinking I got a little more than an hour to go. It's 10 o'clock and yeah, I should be, I'm guessing by the time I get 35 acres, maybe an hour and 20 minutes, hopefully. So be eating supper at midnight kind of thing. Carlisle is the lights right there. We're only a mile from town. This is the same field that I did the canola trial in last year. And yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a late night for Devin. 